What are all of your constituents telling you about the rate of change that they are seeing in their input costs? Well, you know, the folks leading this industry have done a remarkable job over two years. Uh, they, many of them have obviously had experience in this industry for decades. They've never seen an experience like this. You know, when you look at the inflationary environment, you've got everything going up simultaneously from ingredients to transportation to labor to materials. There's never been a time like this. Now, I'm certainly proud of the industry. You see that inflation was up about 7% last year. You look at prices, however, prices are up about 3.5% within consumer packaged goods. This industry is doing everything they can to keep costs down for consumers. They're obviously eating some of those costs, uh, and that, uh, that's something to be proud of. They are, and certainly so. When we talk about the supply chain issues, Jeff, and how that factors into the inflationary pressures, there's been, at least for a while, there was this discussion here that this was temporary and that it would sort of abate. But this has been going on now for more or less more than a year now. And there doesn't seem to appear to be any sort of movement towards that pre-pandemic baseline here. What are they telling you about how they're anticipating, if at all, any sort of drawdown in those, some of those supply chain issues? Well, I think we expect the supply chain challenges to be with us for some time. As a country, we've underinvested in infrastructure. We have underinvested in supply chain policy for many decades. And now that these problems have emerged, they're not going away soon. So I think the supply chain problems are going to be with us for some time. I think the demand is going to be with us for some time. You know, our demand exceeds 2021, exceeds 20, and certainly exceeds 2019. We expect to see that to continue. And we expect these labor challenges to continue. As we all know, we've got millions of people that have chosen to leave this workforce. Uh, there is no easy solution to what we're going to do on the labor side. So I think you're, you're looking at a perfect storm in many respects. Mm -hmm. That said, you know, throughout the crisis, the industry has been able to deliver for 300 plus million Americans each and every day. They will continue to do that. Uh, you talk to a CEO in this industry today, though, it's just a heck of a lot harder job for them than it may have been for their predecessor. Yeah, Albertson CEO in a story on the Bloomberg really talking about these supply outages. He thought they would have been improving by now, and instead, it, Omicron in particular has put a dent into that idea. Talk to us, if you can, Jeff, about where in the country is being hit the hardest, because um, we worry for our team mascot, who is Mocha, the cat that Taylor so loves that she doesn't turn on the heating for him. But whatever happens, he's not getting the food, perhaps, he should be getting right now, because he can't find it in the stores. Well, certainly one of the things that makes Omicron unique is that it's hitting all of the country relatively simultaneously. So we're seeing this pressure uh, peak in the system across the board. That said, when I look at what's happening right now, where you do see uh, more out of stocks within grocery stores, you know, that's due to the labor shortage. It's due to the demand. And then you throw out a little bit of winter weather in some of these markets, and that really pushes the system over the top. We've seen that in the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast recently. I think we are going to see more pressure on the system over the coming weeks as we see uh, the virus um, uh, peak in the Midwest where many of our manufacturing facilities are you know we're, we're 120,000 workers short within the consumer packaged goods industry right now what happens when another 10% call out each day or out because of having to quarantine uh, you can see the pressure on the system a complicated question I'm going to ask. I hope you can give us some insight into this. Some of the notes I've read today say that it's the rent inflation that is not the problem. It's that the fact that for a long period of time you had zero inflation on some of the goods, right, that you've been talking about because of a loss in wage growth for the middle income, the middle class. How do you think now that a big return of this wage growth has fueled then some of the goods inflation that you're seeing and tying this all together? Where is there an end point and what is that endpoint look like? Yeah, we're, we're, we're proud of what we've done, obviously, to not only protect uh, our workforce, but certainly to compensate our workforce. You've seen an increase in manufacturing wages in the neighborhood of about 7%. Uh, that's something that, as I speak with many leaders in the industry, it needed to happen. And, and they're proud of the fact that they could help uh, bring that into uh, to fruition. But there's no doubt when you combine that with the inflation that's happening right now, the report suggests that people have less buying power today, even with that 7% increase in compensation. That's a real concern for all of us. I think what we've got to do is, you know, we've got to see some right-sizing here when it comes to the supply chain pressures, right? We've got to take some of these pressures out of the system. We can do that by keeping more workers on the front lines. One of our biggest problems right now is that in order to stay on the front lines, mm -hmm. you need a test. 
but there's no tests available. Mm. Yeah, that is shameful. Two years into this uh, pandemic, we need to be expediting tests to the essential workforce so we can keep people on the front line. And that's not just in manufacturing facilities. That's with truckers. That's with logistics. That's with other aspects of the system. If we can keep the labor force strong, that will go a long way towards addressing a lot of these inflationary pressures.